Joey versus Odeon. Odeon, while impersonating Marek, is about to defeat a defenseless Joey with his mystical beast, Sir Ket. The real Marek at the last second is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Odeon, to really convince these people you're me, you need to win with the fake copy of the Winged Dragon of Ra I snuck into your deck. I know everybody else who used this fake Ra got struck by lightning, but maybe you're different. Odeon reluctantly gives in and of course gets struck by lightning. As a result, Joey becomes the winner by default. Of course, the question then becomes, if Odeon had simply just attacked with Sir Ket instead of going into the Winged Dragon of Ra, could he have just simply won the duel there? Or better yet, were there any other opportunities for either duelist to win earlier in the duel? We won't know unless we jump into the duel. The duel begins and Joey goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of Swordsman of Landstar, Hayabusa Knight, Gearfried the Iron Knight, Scapegoat, Giant True Nade, and Grave Robber. Almost immediately into the duel, the wind blows all of Joey's cards out of his hand. Luckily, he manages to catch them all. Now, it doesn't appear like Odeon saw any of the cards in his hand. So what was the point of this scene? Comic relief? Well, yes, but also just to showcase the fact that Joey, deep down, is kind of nervous. Though he's putting up a brave facade by saying things like he'll win on the 11th turn, which just reflects on that for a minute. In the original Duel Monsters series, that era of Yu-Gi-Oh, I'll win on my 11th turn is essentially a flex off Joey, by the way. And like nowadays, if you're getting to the third, fourth turn, that's considered a really long duel. Times change, man. Times are crazy. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is the reason why he's nervous is he's going into this duel without his ace, Red Eyes Black Dragon. And of course, the fact he's going against what he believes to be the main bad guy of the series, who also, keep in mind, mind controlled him and forced him to fight against Yugi, you'd be nervous as well. However, what Joey's going to learn throughout this duel is he has other powers in his deck that he can rely on, which he obtained throughout the course of the series. It's not going to help him win, really, but they're there. Kind of cool. Joey summons Gearfried the Iron Knight into attack and ends his turn. It's Odeon's turn, and he draws. His opening hand consists of Temple of the Kings, two copies of Embodiment of Apophis, a mysterious card, Judgment of Anubis, and the Eye of Ujat. Odeon starts by activating his Temple of the Kings field spell. Now, this card's effect is annoyingly vague, and it makes what it does annoying to piece together. You see, it's mentioned in passing that this card limits the amount of spells and traps that Joey can set per turn. By how much? It's not clear. The most we see Joey set throughout the rest of the stool is two cards in one go. So, for the purposes of this, let's just say that this field spell stops Joey from setting more than two cards in a given turn. And I'll be honest, it doesn't really matter because it never factors into the duel. So I don't know why they just offhandedly gave it this effect, but whatever, there's still more effects. Now, while you might recognize this card's real world effect of letting you be able to activate a trap card the turn it is set, it appears that the anime version of this card doesn't have that ability. So if you ever think, oh, we could have activated that trap on the turn it was set, no, that's just the real world version. Instead, this card has the ability that Odeon can remove one monster card in his hand from play. Then during any of his main phases, he can pay half his life points and tribute one monster on his side of the field. He can then summon the monster removed from play by this card's effect. Now you'd think that was everything, but there's also a secret secret ability that Odeon reveals really later on and I don't know, I don't even know if it's his real effect, but he mentions it. Basically he says that while a monster is sealed inside of the temple, the opponent can't declare an attack or use spell cards that affect Odeon or his monsters. Like, he mentions it, so it must be true, but none of this matters for a good chunk of the duel because there's nothing inside the temple just yet because he has, like, no monsters in his deck. In fact, he goes into this duel thinking there are no monsters in his deck to set inside of there. Well, spoilers, the Winged Dragon of Ra has been snuck into his deck, so that's what he'll put in there later when he finds out he has an actual monster in his deck. That isn't Sir Cat, basically. So, anyway, that's Temple of the King's Vague's effect. Carrying on. Odeon ends his turn by setting Judgment of Anubis and Eye of Ujat face down. Why didn't Odeon set all of his trap cards face down? Well, he's an experienced trap card deck user. 
he knows for a fact that if he sets five cards in his back row, if the opponent activates Harpy's Feather Duster, wipes everything, that's everything gone. Obviously, he's got cards to protect them face down, but I think it's a smart move not to overcommit with a trap deck unless you know you've got protection and things like that. So I don't think he made a misplay here at all. I think playing cautiously was a good thing. Plus, he's got Judgment of Anubis face down to protect them anyway, so he's all good. I thought it was a fine first turn by Odeon. It's Joey's turn, and he draws Tiny Guardian. He summons it to the field. Aware of Odeon's trap based deck, Joey decides not to attack. Since he believes that Odeon will have trap cards that punish him for attacking. Think things like Magic Cylinder, Mirror Force, cards like that. And it's a fair assumption to make against a trap deck. However, in this case, he would have been better off attacking. He actually would have been able to get some damage in. So mm, he wouldn't have won, obviously. And the next turn, it would have become an issue and everything. But he could have got one attack off for free. He overfought this one. His logic is what he's going to do is he's going to let Odeon set as many spells and traps face down in the back row. Joey isn't going to attack. And so he's just going to build up his field until he's got over 4,000 attack points on his side of the field. He's then going to activate his giant true nade in his hand. Bounce all the spells and traps back into the hand, attack with all of his monsters, and essentially go for an OTK. There's a whole flash forward vision thing of that and everything. Obviously, if a character thinks they're going to do something and we see a flash forward of that play, it's never going to work out. And of course, it doesn't work out. It's a good theory though, but he should just attack. It's Odeon's turn, and he draws Magic Jammer. He sets Embodiment of Apophis face down along with Magic Jammer. Odeon ends his turn. It's Joey's turn and he draws Fairy Box. Joey summons his Hayabusa Knight to the field. Now with over 4,000 attack, Joey activates Giant True Nade to return all spells and traps back to the hand. In response, Odeon activates his Judgment of Anubis. This card negates a spell card and then destroys all monsters on the field. Damage is then dealt to the opponent, equal to half the combined attack of all monsters destroyed. Hayabusa, Tiny Guardian, and Gear Freed are all destroyed. Joey takes half their combined attack as damage. Hilariously, Yugi in the crowd here reveals that trap cards don't just have the power to quickly turn the tables of duels. They also inflict emotional damage. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Jokes aside, my speech about how the mind games of a trap deck can make you second guess your attacks and can cause you to basically self-destruct in the middle of a duel is actually kind of true. If you've ever had experience against going with someone that sets five pass, it's kind of a nervous thing to go against to be honest with you. It's the threat unseen. So I just thought it was a good bit of like sidebar banter we get from the crowd. So, I don't know, it's quite good. Anyway, with no more plays, Joey ends his turn. For the record, Joey should have set his scapegoat face down. It didn't really matter at the end of the day based on what happens in the next turn, but a potential future that could have been that wasn't in play, but could have been, would have protected him if he put scapegoat face down. But it didn't matter for this play, but if the hypothetical play happened, then he should have skipped, set go, scapegoat face down. You'll see what I mean in a minute. It's just, you'll carry on. It's back to Odeon and he draws a third copy of Embodiment of Apophis. He sets the last two remaining copies of Embodiment of Apophis face down and ends his turn. Okay, so now it's worth noting, Odeon could have won right here on this turn. All he had to do was make sure that he had two set copies of Embodiment of Apophis face down, ready for the turn after he used Judgment of Anubis to wipe Joey's field. Think about it, Odeon was playing so that Joey would fill up his field so he could use his Judgment of Anubis to wipe the field and do as much damage as possible. Had he set two Judgment of Apophis' face down with that empty field, this turn now he could activate both of them, attack, attack for game. In the defense of Odeon, I think he thought that Joey might put more attack point monsters on the field, like higher attack. So maybe he thought one Apophis trap monster would have been enough to finish the last bit of Joey's life points off. So if I had to defend him in that way, I guess there is. And of course, there's always the hypothetical of, yeah, Odeon could have won if he'd done this play, but also Joey could have kept himself alive if he set scapegoat face down a turn earlier. However, that's not true because even if Joey set scapegoat face down, Odeon had magic drain face down, which would have negated it. 
So the thing is, Odeon literally had all the pieces in place to win on the sixth turn. Saying all that though, after looking back at the footage, I did notice that Odeon states that the trap activates when Joey attacked, which makes me think, oh, maybe Apophis can only be activated after a monster has declared an attack kind of thing. If that's the case, this could affect how Odeon could win early in the duel. Unfortunately, I can't confirm 100% whether he's just activated it after Joey attacked or whether he has to activate it after Joey attacks. So if this is the case, then yeah, Odeon couldn't have won earlier in the duel. So ignore everything I've just said. It's Joey's turn and he draws Alligator Sword. He summons it and then sets his fairy box trap face down and ends his turn. Ever noticed Joey always uses fairy box with alligator sword? I wonder why. It's Odeon's turn and he draws a mysterious card. Odeon ends his turn. So this is kind of funny. Odeon is just going to keep passing turn because he wants Joey to attack. Joey's going to keep passing turn because he doesn't want to attack. So it's who gets frustrated with the game state first, which is obviously going to be Joey, but it's kind of funny. Anyway, it's Joey's turn and he draws insect queen. Joey ends his turn. It's Odeon's turn and he draws a mysterious card. He ends his turn. It's Joey's turn and he draws Rocket Warrior. Frustrated about how the game state isn't going anywhere, he decides to summon Rocket Warrior and go on the offensive. He enters his battle phase and attacks Odeon directly. Odeon, in response, uses his set trap Eye of Ujat, which redirects the attack to another of Joey's monsters. Before Rocket Warrior can attack Alligator's Sword, Joey activates Fairy Box, which protects Joey's monsters from attacks until the end of the battle phase. Neither monster is destroyed thanks to this effect. As the battle phase ends, Fairy Box leaves the field. Odeon decides here to summon his three copies of Embodiment of Apophis, which at first I thought was a weird time to summon his monsters during the opponent's turn. However, if the case that the Apophis monsters can only be summoned after a declaration of an attack, and I guess this makes sense here. These cards are trap cards that when they're activated, they special summon themselves to the field as normal monsters, but they also are classed as trap cards, so they also have trap card weaknesses, like Mystical Space Typhoon and things like that. Joey ends his turn by setting Scapegoat face down and switching Alligator Sword into defense. It's Odeon's turn, and he draws Mystical Beast Sir Ket. Odeon moves straight into his battle phase and orders his Apophis trap monsters to attack Alligator Sword and Rocket Warrior. Joey attempts to defend himself by activating Scapegoat to summon four Scapegoat tokens. These tokens, by the way, they tank the attacks for the monsters and aren't classed as monsters on the field, so 2 plus 4 equals 6 monsters, that shouldn't be allowed, but because of the way Scapegoat works in the anime, it's all good. Odeon is having none of this though as he activates his set Magic Jammer, which by discarding a card, negates the activation and effect of a spell card. Odeon discards a mysterious card and negates Scapegoat. The attack continues. Rocket Warrior and Alligator Sword are destroyed. The final Apophis Trap Monster attacks Joey directly. Odeon ends his turn. It's back to Joey and he draws Foolish Burial. He sets Foolish Burial face down along with Grave Robber. He then summons Swordsman of Landstar into defense. Joey ends his turn. It's Odeon's turn, and he draws Seal of Sir Ket. Odeon attempts to go for game. He attacks Joey's Swordsman of Landstar first. However, Joey activates his set Foolish Burial, which sends a monster from his deck to Odeon's grave. He sends Jinzo. Joey then activates the effect of his Grave Robber, which lets him use or summon a card in the opponent's grave. He chooses the Jinzo he just sent, and so it is summoned to his side of the field. Now, because Jinzo's on the field, its effect activates. All trap effects can no longer be activated on the field. Also, on its summon, all traps on the field are destroyed. Since all three embodiment of Apophises are also treated as traps, they are all destroyed. Odeon, with nothing on his side of the field, apart from the field spell, ends his turn. It's Joey's turn, and he draws Battle Warrior. Now, finally, properly on the offensive, he summons Battle Warrior to the field, switches Swordsman of Landstar into attack, and enters his battle phase. Jinzo, Swordsman of Landstar, and Battle Warrior all attack Odeon directly. Sadly, since two of Joey's monsters have like next to no attack points, like 
He has a 700 attack monster and a 500 attack monster? Why does he just play some better monsters? Why would you go into Battle City with Swordsman of Landstar, I kind of get. It's kind of a signature card of Joey. And he's got, like, graceful dice to boost it up and stuff. But, like, 700 attack, Joey. Just play something else, please. Anyway, because he doesn't play better monsters, he can't win in a single OTK play. Joey ends his turn. It's Odeon's turn. And he draws Swords of Revealing Light. He activates it to prevent Joey from attacking for three turns. He does this, hoping to buy himself enough time to find the out for Jinzo. Odeon ends his turn. It's Joey's turn, and he draws the legendary Fisherman. He tributes Battle Warrior to summon it in defense. Joey ends his turn by switching Jinzo and Swordsman of Landstar to defense as well. It's Odeon's turn, and he draws the fake copy of the Winged Dragon of Ra. Odeon sets his Seal of Saket face down. He then uses the effect of Temple of the Kings. He seals the winged Dragon of Ra in his hand inside the temple. Now, whenever he wants during the main phase, he can pay half his life points, tribute one monster, and summon that monster to the field. All he needs now is to get a monster on the field. And I might as well reiterate because it's revealed a little bit later, but it is revealed later by Odeon in his words that by sealing a certain card in Temple of the Kings, Joey can't attack or use spell cards against Odeon. Now, this is a wacky effect that isn't really like described very well, and it's unclear of exactly what he means by they can't be used against him because Joey does use spells. He's going to use a spell in the next turn. But I guess they can't affect Odeon and they can't affect his monsters, I guess, because Joey's going to get Sword and Shield later. I'll talk about that when it comes to it, but I don't know. This is one of those duels that has kind of gone off the rails a little bit because cards aren't being properly describe their effect. Anyway, just keep in mind for the rest of this duel, Joey can't attack Odeon, use spells on him or his monsters, and can't set more than two spells or traps at once. Basically, Joey has no chance. It's Joey's turn, and he draws Monster Reborn. He activates it to bring back Alligator's Sword. He then tributes Alligator's Sword and Swordsman of Landstar to summon Insect Queen in defense. Joey ends his turn. It's Odeon's turn, and he draws Cup of Sealed Soul. With all the pieces in place, Odeon activates his Cup of Sealed Soul from his hand, along with his set Seal of Circuit on the field. Now, with these two cards activated while Temple of the Kings is also on the field, Odeon can summon Mystical Beast Circuit from his hand. Circuit is summoned to the field, however, it can't attack the turn it's summoned. And so, Odeon ends his turn. It's Joey's turn, and he draws Polymerization. Woof, a little bit of a brick there. Don't worry, Joey, I'm sure your next draw will be better. With absolutely nothing he can do in this situation, Joey ends his turn. As he does, Swords of Revealing Light's effect ends. However, this doesn't matter, as Temple of the King also makes it so that Joey can't attack. It's Odeon's turn, and he draws another mysterious card. Odeon enters his battle phase and orders Saket to attack and destroy Jinzo. The attack is successful, and thanks to the effect of Saket, whenever it destroys a monster by battle, it gains half the attack of the destroyed monster. Odeon ends his turn. It's Joey's turn, and yet again he draws another unusable card, Salamandra. With no plays yet again, he ends his turn. It's Odeon's turn. And he draws another mysterious card. Odeon moves straight into his battle phase, uses Circuit to destroy Insect Queen. It's destroyed and Circuit's attack points increase further. Odeon ends his turn. It's Joey's turn. And for the third turn in a row, he draws another card that can't help him. Shield and Sword. With no plays again, he ends his turn. Now, real quick, sadly, I think if Joey was allowed to use Sword and Shield here on Saket, I think he would have won. Saket in the anime has Mystery Defense. We actually see it displayed here. So wouldn't that mean if Joey switched the last monster he has in the field, Legendary Fisherman, into attack, then he used Sword and Shield on Saket? Mystery Defense, its base level is zero, right? If Legendary Fisherman attacks into the Mystery Now attack Saket, He'd win, right? I think that's how it works against mystery stat monsters. It's just undetermined, isn't it? Like, if you use skill drain on a mystery attack monster, it goes down to zero, doesn't it? So, yeah, I think 
If he could have used Sword and Shield here, he could have won. It's a real shame that he couldn't. It's Odeon's turn, and he draws another mysterious card. Odeon enters his battle phase and destroys the legendary fisherman. Sir Cat grows in strength. Odeon ends his turn. It's Joey's turn, and the penultimate turn of the duel. Joey has to draw a monster here if he wants to stay in the duel. Guess what? He doesn't. He in fact draws a mysterious card that sadly is unable to keep him in the duel in any way, shape or form. What was this mysterious card that Joey drew on the final turn? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. And so, with nothing to keep him in the duel, Joey ends his turn. It is here that Joey reveals that he knows that Odeon isn't really Marek, since Odeon is dueling with honor, something the real Marek would never do. This angers the real Marek, and in a panic to continue his facade, he orders Odeon to win the duel with the fake copy of the Winged Dragon of Ra. I mean, personally, I would have just been like, can I just show them that I have Winged Dragon of Ra? Like, look, look, here's Ra. I have Ra. It's here. Please don't make me summon this because it might kill me. So with that in mind, it's Odeon's turn and the final turn of the duel. He draws and gets another mysterious card. By the way, that's six mysterious cards I think he's drew throughout this duel, and he's currently got five mysterious cards in his hand. What are these? What are these things? I guess he doesn't need any protection or anything because he's like so sorted in the duel. He's like sound. This just solidifies to me that Odeon is in such a winning position. There was no chance of Joey ever winning this duel to most of you. Anyway, Odeon wanted to win with Sir Ket, but not wanting to disobey Marek, he instead uses the final effect of Temple of the Kings. Odeon pays half his life points and tributes the one monster he has on the field in order to summon the fake Winged Dragon of Ra. Odeon explains that while Egyptian gods, yes, typically need three monsters to be summoned, this is a special situation since Sir Ket had absorbed three monsters and so it was classed as free tributes. This tracks for me and I wouldn't class it as shenanigans as it was actually established. Cards like Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, well, it's made up of three monsters so it can be used as free tributes for a card. It was established for Battle City, so it's fine. Due to Ra's effect, it gains attack equal to the tributed monster's attack points. Now, with a 5,825 attack fake Egyptian god card on Odeon's side of the field, he attacks Joey directly, attempting to go for game. However, the fake winged dragon of Ra disobeys. Ra refuses to attack and instead disintegrates itself. The real Ra, angered, starts raining down lightning on the two duelists. Both are struck. After a moment, Odeon almost gets up, but fails. Joey, however, ultimately rises thanks to the power of friendship. With Odeon unable to battle, Joey Wheeler technically wins the duel. And so, with all that laid out, what did I think of this duel? Well, Odeon was robbed. He absolutely should have won this duel. I know the whole point of this duel is just to establish that yes, he is fake Marek and he needs to keep up this facade and everything, but Odeon could have won really early in the duel, like I said, if he summoned more of his Apophysis cards and everything. Joey had one opportunity to win after he wiped Odeon's field with Jinzo, which is like a perfect counter to Odeon's deck. But the problem with Joey, he plays too many weak monsters in his deck. If he had stronger monsters, he could have won, but unfortunately he didn't. Overall, I would say that Odeon was much more the superior duelist. I think Joey's Battle City experience from this duel probably should have ended here. I mean, technically you could say that Odeon probably should have been disqualified for dueling under a fake name and using illegal fake copies of cards. But when it comes to Kaiba, he's kind of like wishy-washy with things to do with the Egyptian gods. If an Egyptian god wielder wants to cheat a little bit, it's fine as long as that Kaiba can get it in the end. While I will agree that Temple of the Kings is an insanely overpowered card, I'll be honest, I have never seen Joey Wheeler draw so badly as the final turns of these duels. So yeah, Odeon was robbed, mainly by Marek, but a little bit by the plot, let's be honest with you. If you enjoyed this duel, let me know in the comment section below what you thought, but if you'd like to watch a different duel, well, I have this duel right here, or this duel right here. Don't watch that much, watch this one. It's up to you though. Thank you all for watching. Catch you later.